Hi, I'm Jeff Huber from Breakthrough Basketball, and in this video, you're going to see five ways to exploit your opponent's weaknesses and eliminate their offensive strengths with these 2-3 zone defensive adjustments from Hall of Fame coach Al Marshall. But first, listen to some of these defensive statistics that are hard to believe from Coach Al Marshall's teams. Coach Marshall played man-to-man -man defense for over 25 years and won about 55-60% to 60 of his games. However, after he made the switch to the 2-3 zone, he won a staggering 86% of his games over his last 11 seasons. Here are some more of his accomplishments. His teams led the state in defensive field goal percentage for six straight years. His team smothered opponents and held teams to 31.9 points per game during one season. His teams held their state tournament opponents to 29.7 points below their season average, and his teams won 42 district and conference championships. Now let's get started. All right, we start, talked about the pickup point for the guards being the three-point play. Uh, a few years ago, I had very quick guards. It was a very, very quick team. It wasn't a big team. And we extended, uh, we picked up out here, step-up guards. We were up at the volleyball line, okay? That entire, that made the forwards pick up higher, okay? The center picked up higher. The whole thing came up higher because we were very athletic. These guards were very, very quick. They put great pressure on the defense and we wanted to get them. They started there. Sometimes they'd end up in here and especially if they smelled any hesitancy on the point guard, uh, they were all over him at and after the ball and making life difficult for him. That's just one of the things you might do based on your personnel and, and what you're doing there, okay? An alternate setup for the guards also is to line up in tandem. Uh, Austin, let's get you in the middle here. Jake, they're back, back to your kind of normal. And Austin can be a little higher here, but everybody else is kind of normal, okay? And this is just if we want to put some pressure on uh, another player coming up, okay? And all that happens here is once the ball is passed to a wing, Jake takes the first pass, Austin's back here, and everything else is exactly the same. Some years are against some teams you'd like to extend the court and put more pressure on teams. We do this one of two ways. The first way we do is line up in the 2-2-1 zone press and then fall back into our 2-3. We're naturally lined up so it falls back uh, very easily for us. The thing about this is the guards can pick up at whatever level they want. If you're a very quick team, you want full, pre full court pressure all the way, you get up here, you can even face guard, whatever. If you're not as quick, the guards can back up to their, to their first pickup point. Could be here, could be the top of the circle, could be the volleyball line, might even almost be like a half court trap. Wherever you're comfortable with what you want to do, and basically the same slides of the 2-2-1 uh, zone press is what you want to do. That's one way to extend the court, full court. The other way we do it is Austin get up here in a man-to-man -man situation. Jake in the middle, yeah. Forward's a little bit higher to start than you would normally, okay? Just so you're alert for a long pass. What we do on this is we have our point guard, our best uh, ball defender, step up and play him man-to-man, -man, the person driving up court. Uh, it would look like you could just throw the ball ahead to the wing with only one guy there, but surprisingly few teams do that. They want their point guard to have it in his hands, they feel more comfortable with that. So they do throw it there, they're liable to have a person with uh, less skillful or less uh, comfortable in their decision making to go ahead and make the play. So Austin goes ahead and guards this guy hard, okay, tries to turn him a couple of times. So he might have a turnover when he exposes the ball or something like that. We get up here and eventually we're gonna throw it to a wing and then our guards are just in tandem, just like we showed before. Sometimes you have an outstanding perimeter player on the other team and you need to really keep tabs on him. So there's a couple of ways that we try to counter that if we can. Uh, one of the ways is what we call one three and a chaser instead of a box and one or a diamond and one. And the one three and a chaser allows us basically to have the same slides that most of our people would in the regular offense, okay? So in this case, Caleb is gonna be the outstanding player here, all right? And Jake, you're gonna cover Caleb, so you're gonna be man to man on him, okay? Austin, you're the one right here. Yeah, give Harris a ball, <clears throat> okay? Now, <clears throat> 
you forwards are probably gonna have to be just a little bit higher to start with than you even would normally, okay? All right, but you're gonna see that most of our slides end up being the same, okay? Go ahead and take it there. Boom, okay? You're back. Now you might have to stay just, yeah, a little bit higher. Now if he comes, if he comes fine, you're there, but you can, yeah. Who's over here now? There's nobody over here. You just have to worry about helping Jake with the star and knowing where he is at, okay? Bring it back the other way. Okay, let's get open. Caleb, get open so you've got it. Jake stays. Austin, you're splitting just like you normally would. Okay, you're able to help inside. You're able to help on penetration either way because this is a great player. Okay, on a skip pass, it'd be the same thing. Uh, go ahead and skip it. Jared's got it. Jared's got to get there. And that's basically what it would look like. Okay, one, three, and a chaser. It doesn't require a lot of teaching because the slides are pretty similar. Okay, the other way we might handle this if the player is great, especially if it might be a, a, a point guard in particular, but even, even a wing player, we'll leave it in the wing player again, is we just box the person, okay? Get back in the 2-3 zone, okay? <clears throat> now, Caleb is a great player, so whenever it goes to Caleb, we are gonna box him, okay? And so what I want you to do, you're gonna come up and box him, okay? And let's have Harris, once you pass to Harris, cut through to the corner, okay? And then Caleb, you're gonna dribble up here. That's so we're gonna have the box with uh, Jake and Austin instead, okay? When Harris cuts through the corner, you stay with him. We're boxing the great player. We're not concerned about Harris and don't throw it there. Just dribble back up here so we can see the box coming on this side as well, okay? Okay. Get him, get him, get him, get good. Dribble, dribble, get there Austin, get there. No, oh, whoa, 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 come again, come again, come in. He's a great player. He is a great player. You waited for him instead of attacking him. He's a great player, attack him. Okay, here we go. Attack him, attack him, good, 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 good. Now wherever he's at, wherever he's at, you're gonna box him. Get it now, get it to Caleb in the corner. Get it, get it to Caleb in the corner. Get it to Caleb in the corner. Get it to Caleb in the corner. Now get there, get there, Jake, get there, Jake. Good, 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 don't let it out, don't let it out, don't let it out, don't let it out. Good, good, that's good, that's good, thank you. Next thing we're gonna show is we shade shooters sometimes. Uh, it's very seldom that you'll have a team that has three equally good outstanding shooters on the perimeter. So why not shade and be a little late to the one who can't shoot as well, okay? We're gonna show you first if it's, on a, if it's one of the a wing shooter and a point shooter and one of the wings isn't as good but more likely we see is two wing good shooters and the point is not as good a shooter, okay? All right, so right now Mitchell can't shoot, okay? Sorry, Mitchell, all right. So now we're gonna make sure we cover Caleb. We're never gonna let him be open. You gotta step up hard on Harris because he's a good shooter, okay? You can be a little tardy and you both can be a little tardy getting to Mitchell, okay? So you don't have to cover him quite as strong but it's basically the same principle. We, we just are, we are recognizing we cannot be late with him. We cannot be late with him. We cannot get beat with either one of those taking a shot, okay? If Mitchell hits a bunch of shots, okay, we understand that, okay? One of the things I guess we're pointing out here is that with the zone, sometimes you may not be able to stop a team from shooting, but you can pick who shoots. Okay, here we go. Don't let, don't let, don't let Caleb get a shot, don't let Harris get a shot. Go, get there, get there, get there. Good, 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 good. Anticipate, good, good. Get there, Austin, get there, Austin. Gotta step up on him, good. Don't worry about that. Get there, get there, get there, Reagan. Good, 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 good. Nice talk, Jake. Good, 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 good. Stop, stop, stop. Thank you, you get an idea of that, okay? Next one we wanna do is what we see more often, okay? And that is a weak shooter here, two good shooters on the wings, okay? So the way we'd handle this is the guards obviously be much flatter. They don't necessarily step up to play him, okay? And the, the center now probably has to step up and play the high post guy almost one-on-one. -on -one, and then the two forwards handle the guy underneath, okay? So the guards are flat. The forwards have to step up and take the shot away. The guards are getting there. 
the post player has to step up here because it's, he's more likely to have a shot, so the post player's got to cover that, okay? They just walk through it first so we, so we can see what it kind of looks like. So get it to there, boom, okay? Yeah, he's low, okay? He's coming high, good, good, that, that's fine. Back in, Reagan, back in, Reagan, you're good, okay? Throw it to the high post guy. You gotta cover him because we're, we're, you're concerned. Now, you, you, can't, you can't be in here because he's a great shooter, so you've gotta stay at the elbow, okay? So now, Connor's gotta handle him, he's one-on-one, -on -one, and you two forwards should be able to handle one guy underneath. But you guys, the guards, have to stay home. You're not helping now, you're flaring on the shooters, okay? So they can't get a shot, okay? Let's run it live for just a little bit so we can take a look at it. <clears throat> good, good. Get there. Ah. Stop, stop, stop. See, right. you're still too far here, Austin. Your responsibility is not here. Your responsibility is now him. See, if he gets a shot and he scores, that's on me because I told you to do this. If he gets a shot and scores, that's on you because I told you to take that away. Understand the difference? Okay, here we go. <coughs> stay, stay, stay. Good, 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 good. <coughs> All right, stop. <coughs> Maybe it was an unusual year this past year, but this part where the point guard was not a good shooter, we saw fairly frequently last year. Now, it doesn't always happen that way, but last year we did. That's what I always talk about, making adjustments based on what you're seeing, what your personnel is like, and what the opposition is like, all right? Last, uh, next one we're gonna show is one we've already kind of talked about a lot. That's a great uh, post player. Austin, you're a great post player again. Get over here. I think we've done this. We've done this in drill and whatever. Okay, so get over here. If you have a great low post player, it's usually down there. And we're just going to do, what we've already done enough drill on this, I think you understand, okay? So Reagan's gonna stay in there to start with, try to help it away. If he's a great post player, uh, you're gonna be even more inside. Mitch will get up on the, top here, so we got kind of an overload. Yeah, about, about there, that's fine, okay? So you throw it in here, and you've got to drop down to help deter, okay? Everybody is cognizant of where the great player is now and trying to help deter the ball from going in there. We showed you this in four round one. We showed you this in one of the drills we did. So it's basically the same coverage if you have a great post player and you're trying to take it away, okay? We hope you enjoyed this zone defense video. If you want instant access to five drills to build a dominant 2-3 zone defense, make sure to click the link in the description so you gain access to a free PDF featuring diagrams, descriptions, and bonus tips. Again, if you incorporate these drills into your basketball practices, you will see improvement in your team's toughness and ability to lock down your opponents. Make sure to click and subscribe and then click the bell button so you're the first to know when we release more new videos. Thanks for watching.